Hey everybody, Chris Petrie, welcome. I'm excited. We're going to try out some oil painting. I'm hoping you're really uh, open-minded to the idea of creating some oil paintings, uh, creating a little bit of um, different uh, textures and uh, feel for your painting techniques that you have. So if you're a watercolor artist and you've been painting in watercolor, it doesn't matter if you've been painting a month, two months, a year, a couple years, or if you're a grizzled pro and you've been painting, you know, watercolors for uh, five, ten years, there's no reason why you can't try a little bit of oils. We're going to cover in this video getting started with oils and all the benefits and fun things about it um, and all of the things that have revolutionized uh, oil painting. You can't believe it. Years ago, you, when you created oil paintings, you had to have all kinds of toxic chemicals in your studio and in your home, paint thinners and terpenoids and all these type of things made things dangerous, fumes, inhaling all that stuff. I realized many, many people that painted in oils years ago gave it up because they just couldn't handle all of that uh, problems that uh, oil painting actually created with their, um, their artistic uh, endeavors with oils. So now we're going to basically cover here on this this video this tutorial how they make new incredibly advanced oil paints that you can mix with water so you don't have to worry about any of the solvents oils uh, paint thinners terpenoids turpentines anything like that not at all all we need is some water in a water container and our brushes and our um, oil paints here i'm using winsor newton artisan Water mixable oil colors, and again, that's all you need is water. It washes up with soap and water. It doesn't matter if it gets on your clothes, your blouse, your shirt, your furniture, your carpeting. It cleans up with soap and water. So no reason to ever shy away from trying out some oils. It's a beautiful medium, an incredible medium, and we're going to start doing it here on my channel. And always remember, I'm not changing anything. My watercolor videos and my tutorials are going to be the same. We're, we're doing full force watercolor on my channel. I'm just going to introduce a little bit of oil painting to my channel, hoping that some of you will like to um, join along and have fun with it. Okay, all right, we'll be right back and we'll get started. Hi everybody, Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by. It's great to see you here with me on YouTube. Well, we're going to get started with some oil painting. Uh, it's about time, I think, for myself um, to get more interested in oil painting, and I'm hoping you'll possibly uh, think the same way. Maybe it's time for you also to join along and do a little bit of oil painting, start a new medium, which is very much um, in line with watercolors. If you're painting in watercolors, you can absolutely paint with oil paints. Uh, actually, it would be almost like there's no real discernible difference uh, in oil painting with watercolor in some respects. You're going to be using your same brush techniques. You're going to be mixing colors similar, you know, mixing your colors. You're going to be always looking for a good basic um, drawing when you start. You're going to be looking for good tonal values, you know, the darks and lights of your painting, capturing good light in your paintings. So really painting in oils is a perfect uh, segue for watercolor artists. And I'm getting more interested now in um, oil painting. I'm hoping you will too. I'm just going to put a few oil paintings on my channel now and again, and I'm hoping you won't mind that. I'll always put the oils in the title so that if you're not interested in oils whatsoever and you're saying, Chris, I have no um, interest at all in oils, well, that's fine. I'm going to put that oils uh wording and verbiage in my titles of my video so that you'll know right away if it says oils in the title of my video if you're not interested well then obviously you just you don't even you won't even bother clicking on the video but if you're maybe interested in learning some new things about oils maybe you're on the fence right now about oils maybe you definitely are interested in starting oils whatever the case wherever you're at you're the artist you're, you're going to kind of start to ask yourself questions about maybe I am interested in maybe starting some oil painting and it's a perfect uh again segue from watercolor to paint in oils it's really a lot there's a lot of similarities there are differences obviously we're going to cover that as we go so here i just started myself a little notebook in this notebook i'm just going to make my notes about oils in my notebook here as we go right now it's the notebook's empty i'm going to be filling it up with notes as we go i'll set that aside one of the greatest things I think right now with um, oil paints is the great scientists and um, people that work with um, chemicals and paints and things like this that work for the artists in the artist industry, the creators, the people that work at Winsor Newton and all the other great um, 
uh, paint manufacturers. They created uh, what's called the Windsor & Newton brand artisan paints, which are water mixable. And what I wanted to say was this is the most important thing, I think, which made me excited about oils was it's water mixable, which means you can clean it up with soap and water. If you get it on your clothes, on your furniture, on your carpet, it washes up with uh, soap and water. And also, there's no dangerous um, type of uh, solvents, so you don't have to use any kind of solvents like paint thinner, terpenoids, turpentine, anything like that, no need. You can use regular water to thin down your oil paints when you're working and just you're using basically the paints and you can use water for your paint thinner. So basically when you want to thin down your water mixable oil paints now, nowadays with the technology they have, you can just use water. So I'm going to have a regular water bucket, water collapsible water container. I have my Holbein um, water container. I have that on my table right here next to me as we're going to start to paint. We'll do a simple color wheel right now just to get started, kind of get ourselves, um, you know, kind of uh, amping up a little bit here on our oils. And uh, again, this is a phenomenal uh, experience now for me because um, I wouldn't like the idea of having paint thinners around in my house and uh, terpenoids and things like that. That might catch fire. I don't like the idea of the fumes of that kind of a thing. Now, again, with the great uh, people that work with Windsor & Newton and other great um, paint companies that create uh, artist paints, they've made them so that you can, again, mix them with water so there's no danger at all whatsoever using your water mixable oils. Okay, so we're going to be using water mixable oils. That's the biggest thing for me. So that's why I'm really excited about this painting and oils. I don't have to worry about all that stuff that's dangerous about it. Okay, um, so let's get started. We're going to do a color wheel, a simple color wheel. I have some, these are, uh, I, these are by uh, uh, Blick. I buy these on, uh, again, all my materials, all my art materials are down below in the description box in my videos. You might have to click on the word more to see more information. And then when you click on more, Below in the in this video, you'll see that there's I have a whole list of art supplies and art products that I use. They're right all on Amazon, so I get all my art supplies on Amazon most of the time, and it's very convenient. It gets shipped like the next day or you know so, so it's really you know fantastic as far as uh, reliability. It gets here quick to my studio. Prices are great, so I have all my art supplies listed below for everything that I'm doing in, in oil painting for the most part, maybe 90% of everything. Sometimes I might have something I might not have listed below and you can always uh, ask me in the comment section below and I can always, you know, give you more information as far as where to find things. But these I get at the Blick uh, store by my house. These are Blick canvas panels and these are really nice. These are really awesome. They're nine by twelves and they're uh, hard, hard panels that have the uh, canvas um, glue down to the surface and then on the backs is like a, a cardboard or like a hardboard backing with a canvas covering on top so it acts just like a regular canvas that you would paint um, for oils so I'm using the hardboards these are canvas panels these are 100% cotton canvas and you can find these again on Amazon I have the links below you can get them in all different sizes these are 9 by 12s I figured these are really a good basic um, size for for your canvas uh, panels that you might use. So that's really our basics of it. And then I have a couple brushes you can look below in my again in my description below. You'll see I have all kinds of brushes I've listed. These are basically um, hog hair brushes, which are really like infamous for oil painting hog hair brushes. And I have a um, this is like a um, I would say this is like a filbert. So this is a filbert. Let me see if I can find something dark here. Let's do this here. So this is a filbert shape. You can kind of see that it's kind of like a, a rounded shaped brush hairs. The hairs are rounded a little bit. And then I have a round brush, which are kind of like our watercolor brushes that we use all the time here on my channel. So these are two hog hair brushes that are for oils. And I'll have those over here. We'll use those. And also a palette knife. 
I thought I would uh, also let you know that this is another real exciting and fun part of oil painting is you can use palette knives to do water, uh, to do oil painting. So with watercolors, there, there's no watercolor artists that probably use to a high degree a palette knife like this. But when you're doing oils, you can work with your oil painting and, and actually create all of your paintings with your palette knife. And we'll show you how to use your, your palette knife to put down your paint onto your canvas like that. And this happens to be a number 10 Blick, uh, number 10 uh, palette knife. And this is the basic... Uh, kind of the shape of it and how it looks and this is really nice it's got a little bit of flexibility to it so you can kind of see how that's got some flexibility to it which is really nice so I'll set these aside for right now and then I have a protractor this is a Statler uh, protractor these are phenomenal to have if you want to draw perfect circles so I'm going to set this down what I did is I just made with my ruler a center mark on my canvas here my hardboard canvas I made a center mark there and I went across this way and I made another center mark here. Then once I have the actual exact center of my hardboard canvas, then I take my protractor and I'm just going to make a circle. And I just made the circle with enough room around the sides that I can make my notes. So you'll notice that we're going to make some notes as we go. But this protractor is great for making circles. You can kind of see we're going to get a perfect circle here with pencil. This is good. There's a pencil inside this protractor. Like that. Okay. And then as we start to get our circle all set up here, then what we're going to do is we're going to actually we're going to take our circle and we're going to divide it half in half vertically like this. So I'm hoping this is kind of going, I'm going at a good pace here where everyone can kind of keep, keep along with me here. We're, again, we're doing oils now, so this is a, a little bit of a different video, but I hope you're excited. I hope you're gonna be interested in learning a little bit about oils, oil painting. So we divided our circle now in half, and again, we, we found that the easiest way to get our circle was to use a protractor. You don't have to do that and go through that trouble of buying a protractor. You can use a roll of tape like this. So a roll of tape can always work too. You just go around the roll of tape, get a circle. Then you have your circle. Then you just want to divide your circle in half by just going vertically straight up and down. And you get your halfway point. Then what I do is I pretend this is like a, a watch dial or a clock and I just say, okay, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, and then what I want to do is I just want to make a hash mark for 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. But I don't want to make a line across there. I want to go with 2 o'clock, which is about here. So if I have 1 o'clock here, 2 o'clock here, and 3 o'clock, I want to go about between 1 and 2 about 1.30. And then here you have 9, 10, 11, 12. So I want to go between 10 and 11, which is 10.30. 10.5, and then I'll make another line here. So what I'm doing is making like a pie chart, basically. Then down here, I'm going to say, okay, we have 6, 7, eight, nine. This is three P you know, so let's call it like a watch dial. Three, 12, six, nine. Does that make sense? So we're just doing like a watch dial or a clock dial around this circle. We started out with the 12 and six o'clock and we made a, a perfect vertical line, 12 and six. There we go. 12 and six. Then we're going to, um, just carry these through these lines through here which is the um, 130 pretty much like a 130 and a 1030 okay and then this one here we're going to just carry this one through And 
and that's pretty good. You can kind of see that our pie chart is nice uh, equal pies throughout this circle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically we're going to go with the first three primary colors which are the foundation of all colors. So all colors are derived from our three primaries. So our three primaries, we're going to just put a Y for yellow. That's our first primary, yellow. Then uh, blue is our second, you know, you could start at any given point between the primaries, yellow, blue, and red. Okay, yellow, blue, and red. Now, what you could do, which I really suggest is a great thing, is you could maybe take your Oils Water Mixable Notes book and then open up to a page where there's some good paper, kind of a clean sheet of paper, and we'll do the same thing again. Maybe I'll use this roll of tape, which is a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to go right around that roll of tape like so. There we go. So I'm going to do the same thing we just did here on the canvas in a notebook that we're going to have for our oil notes. And again, I'm not going to go too fancy with it. I'm just going to say, okay, we divided our half here. We're going to do the clock. 6, 12, 3, 9. And then we said that... with our watch dial, we want it to go between 10 and 11, 1030, center point, 1030, and we'll just carry it right through, 1030, and then 130, here, 130, and then carry that one straight on through. And there we go, we have pretty much the same dial that we're creating here on our canvas. And then we're saying here is yellow. And let me do this. Let me make this in darker. Let me make this dark so you can see it real clearly. Apologies that I did it in pencil. I'm sorry. Sometimes pencil does not look great on camera. So I'm going to do this right around here with some blue Sharpie. That looks better, I'm sure. Blue Sharpie. Then again, we're going to do 12 and 6 o'clock on the watch dial or clock. There we go. We have half. We have our circle divided in half. Then we're going to say we have the 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 12 o'clock watch dial. And then we're going to say we have 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock rock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, rock, 10, 11, and we're rocking around the clock here. And so now that we have that, then we're saying we're going between 1 and 2 for this in between 8 and 9, uh, 7 and 8, 7.30. I'm trying to be a little uh, humorous here <laughs> with our happy days. And then, there we have it. We have our pie, perfect pie chart. Then we're saying that, maybe I'll use a different color here so that this is a little different. So then here's yellow. Yellow, blue, and red. So these are our three primary colors. Again, those three primary colors, as you know from watercolor, if you've studied watercolor for years or so on, You'll know that the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You could start out with yellow, blue, red, however you want to create that trio of colors, but these are what all other colors are derived from. The next thing we do is we want to make our secondary colors. Maybe I'll use some green magic marker if I can find green. All right, I'll use orange. So here we're going to say green. That's our secondary color, green. Violet. Secondary color and orange over here is our secondary color. Okay. 
And then we can also we could just say secondary. 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 And then red is a primary. Yellow is a primary. And blue is a primary color. So that's all you really have to have is that color wheel, just like we created it here. And then you kind of know how your primaries are, you know, yellow, red, blue, all of your other colors that you've ever, that you've ever seen are always derived from the red, yellow, and blue, just like in a, on a TV screen. If you ever look closely at a TV screen or a computer screen or a cell phone screen, all you see on that screen, if you looked very close with a magnifying glass or a microscope, would be red, yellow, and blue dots, dots of color. And then what they do is they change those dots of colors, the red, yellow, and blue dots, uh, to create the effect of all of the colors in the color wheel, which would be the other colors too, violet, green, orange, and all of the other tertiary colors, and then all the other colors that are beyond that uh, scope. So basically, if you have your primary and your secondary colors like this, kind of like set and you kind of see how those are and how they mix together, you're all set from there. You can pretty much figure out the tertiary, other, you know, other colors mixed from this. But we'll get into other interesting details as we go with oil painting in these videos. But my first video here, I just wanted to cover the primary colors and the secondary colors in our color wheel on our canvas with some oil paints. And we have a wax paper type, this is called uh, palette paper. It's like a wax paper. So let's take a break right now. Uh, it's been about 15, 20 minutes now. We've been kind of working along here. We're lots of new information. I'm hoping you're excited about it. Please watch this video over uh, again, two, three, four times, however long it takes to kind of get the basics of the start of oil painting so that you have it. It's a good foundation. You should probably only have to maybe watch it once or twice. And then if you can create, like again, if you can create a little bit of a notebook, I have notebooks everywhere. I have notebooks like this here too. I have small notebooks like I have like this. I keep around too for my watercolor and um, notes that I use for uh, artwork. So I'm hoping you'll kind of use some notebooks, get your notes down, and then this way you can refer back to them. So let's do this. Let's take a break. I'll get some uh, oil paints out from this paint set and we'll get them out onto our waxed paper type uh, palette paper and we'll start putting some paints out on our our hardboard uh, canvas here and we'll have a lot of fun doing it okay all right so we'll be right back all right so we're gonna get started now with some painting so let's just call this our oil color wheel so I'm hoping you'll And we'll call this our oil color wheel. And you could even do this neater if you wanted to. You could take some pencil lines and kind of use a ruler and go across here like this and make a line like this and a line up here and keep all of your lettering right neatly within the lines. That's fine too. You create your own notes and your own um, note taking to the level that you want to take it to. You're the artist, you're going to figure out how detailed you want to get on your notes for oil painting. I'm sure you've taken lots of notes for watercolor painting. So I'm going to start out with my, uh, again, we kind of talked about, this is the Filbert style, a uh, goat hair brush. And uh, it kind of looks like a, uh, you know, kind of like a, 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 like an arched tip on the end of the brush. So we'll use this to start with. And then we have our, again, Winsor & Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oil Colors. Again, this is the crucial point I wanted to mention about oil painting nowadays. 
you don't have to worry about all of the nasty um, solvents and fumes and all these type of things and things that are flammable that are dangerous. No, you don't have to. You can paint oils safely, just like you paint in watercolors. So that's the most exciting thing I find right now with oil painting is I can do it safely and I'm not worrying about anything dangerous at all. Okay, so I'm going to open up my new kit of oils. And I like to buy these large tubes because for me, I know I'm going to be painting a lot of oil paintings and this is just the beginning for me. So I'm going to be really, you know, going through a lot of paint. So I'll start out with our primaries, which we said were blue, yellow, and red. So I'll go with the cadmium red, cadmium red, French ultramarine blue, and uh, cadmium yellow. And we use these all the time on my channel for watercolor painting. So we already know these colors. They're familiar to us. Again, like I said, there's a ton of familiar um, tie-ins with oil and watercolor. So basically, you should have no problem whatsoever oil painting. If you're a watercolor artist and you've been following my channel, you'll just simply, if you want to, you can start out with some oil painting and you'll, you'll do fine. You're going to see all the same colors. You're going to be using all the same techniques and methods pretty much. You're going to use a little different techniques and things like that but there okay, we're going to go we're going to squeeze out some cadmium yellow some blue and some red cadmium red so french ultramarine blue cadmium red and cadmium orange those are our three colors we're going to use i'll put them right up here like that. We'll take our Filbert brush, hog hair brush. You can use any brush you want that you feel is comfortable for you for your oils. And we're just going to take that and we're going to we're going to thin it down with a little touch of water. So what I'll do is I'll grab some water and just spritz some water right here on my palette. I have a water bucket over here too. You can use that. But I just wanted to thin my yellow ochre down just a touch with a little bit of water. And there we go. And then let's just get that on there. I'll make it a little bit thicker. I want to kind of cover over that Y there. And that's all I'm going to do is fill in here. This brush is really large as far as if you can see, this brush is probably about 12 inches. So I'm used to using smaller brushes. And this is, yeah, this is a 12 inch brush. So I might take a, um, I'll go down to my basement and in the shop and I'll trim these brushes down a little bit because they're starting to bump into my gear here, my painting gear, my, uh, my video gear. I have video, if you can imagine, I have a, a metal a metal stand that's on my above my table and right now that metal stand that metal stand is actually I'm bumping into it with my brush so I'm gonna have to either trim my brushes down or buy a new stand so I think I'm gonna trim my brush down so there you can see we added some thicker paint to cover over that yellow uh, that Y for the yellow okay there we go, we have our first primary color. Let me grab some water. Okay, we got some water, bottled water. I'm gonna put right into the container, the collapsible water container. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And with um, oil paints, it's similar to watercolor. Once you rinse off your brush, you can dry off your brush on a paper towel or a tissue, like that. Then let's do red next. So we're going to take some red, work out some red here. If you want to, again, you can dip your brush in a little bit of water and thin that down just a little bit. Okay, and then we have our red. And then what we'll do is we'll go a little bit thicker, cover over that R as best we can. A 
look how exciting that collar is. Is that not exciting or what? Are you excited about oils? I hope you're going to get excited and you're going to get some oil paints, some brushes, some hardboards and get yourself started because it's going to get your curiosity excited. And it'll also kind of give you a break a little bit from watercolor once in a while. So you can take a break from watercolor and you're doing a little bit of oils work. And then when you go back to oils, you'll be excited again. You'll be like, oh, I miss oils. I, I mean, I miss watercolors. I've been working with oils for a few weeks. So that's where it kind of works to your advantage. If you can work in some oils into your repertoire, it really might be a fantastic uh, way to um, kind of keep yourself excited about watercolors by actually taking a break from watercolors you take a break from watercolors and you do a little bit of oil painting and the next thing you know you can't wait to get back and do your watercolor painting there we go our third primary color so we have our yellow red secondary you know it's our sec our primary color red and then primary blue And this is French ultramarine blue. This is cadmium red and cadmium yellow. So those are the three primary co colors we chose. You can choose other primary colors. So you can create a color wheel that has different primary colors. Like you might go with, um, you could, uh, since, well, if you've been painting in watercolor and, you, and you, you're familiar with our palette that we constantly use, you could say, oh, well, I could use a, a lemon yellow and like a alizarin crimson red, and then maybe like a cerulean blue. And that's kind of the same thing. You'd still have your primaries. They would just be a little bit different. The primary colors that you're going to use. So you can have fun with this and create different uh, primary and secondary and tertiary colors using a little bit of a variation on the same idea of the pr three primary colors that you're going to use. Maybe we'll do that. And then, and then up uh, in the future, uh, up and coming the next uh, few weeks or next month or so, we'll, we'll try a different three primary colors and then we'll see what happens and how things look when we work with those. But let's stick with these right now. So now, now that we have our primaries completed, we can even just give ourselves that little bit of Let's just call this, you know, we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this yellow. Blue. Red. Primaries, right? Okay, now we're going to go with our secondary, so we'll just... We'll take that and we'll just use a different Sharpie here. We'll make some notes on this and we'll call this our primary. 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 All right, let's do our secondary colors. Then we said that was orange, green, and violet, and we're gonna make them from these colors right here. So we're not gonna change any tubes of color. We're just gonna work right from here. So I just rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water on my um, paper towel, and let's go for the first one. Let's go for, let's go for orange and red. So we take a little bit of orange here, a yellow. We, so we take our cadmium, um, cadmium yellow, now I know right away when I look at this cadmium yellow, I'm only going to need a tiny bit of red to make the orange. So I want to really avoid making too much uh, red in my orange paint or my yellow paint. So let me just get a little bit of that. Because this is almost already like orange. 
So let me just mix that. Can you see that, how I'm doing that? I'm making a, an orange, but I'm going a little bit slow. I'm not adding too much red at the same time. That looks like a good orange to me. It's kind of like halfway between this and the yellow. So there we go. We got orange. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> this is great. See, when you start with a new medium, you automatically have a good time. You have fun. You're, you know, that's what it's about. Having fun. Sometimes when we're working with watercolor year after year, we get a little bit like, you know, kind of get stale. So let's keep away from getting stale with our watercolors by just having a little bit of fun with some oils for a while. And then we'll go back to our watercolors and we'll be even more excited. So there we go. We have our orange. Okay, so now we wash off our brush again, dry off a little bit of the water on a paper towel, and let's go with our violet, which again we would say would be blue with a touch of red to make a purple or violet color. And you can see how that looks, right? That looks pretty good right away. I, I'm thinking that's a good violet right there. That reminds me of my Ultramarine Violet by Winsor Newton on my watercolor set. So, there we go. I meant... I might leave a little bit of that white paper there just so we can kind of see the... That's really close as far as it's hard to kind of see the difference in, in some respects. But that's how it looks to me. I think this is a good violet right here we have. It's darker in tone, tonal value. Can you see how it's darker in tonal value with the um, purple, the violet, versus the blue, French ultramarine blue? French ultramarine blue is a very dark tonal value. So this mixed with red equals even a darker tonal value with the violet color. So that's important to kind of see that. And then we'll rinse off our brush one more time and we're going to get our green. We rinse off the brush. Now we're going to go with yellow and blue to make a green. How does that green look? Well, that's going to look like a olive green, which is fine by me. I really enjoy olive green. So we're going to have an olive green here. Hope you don't mind that. I really enjoy olive green. A lot of olive green in nature with trees, leaves, plants. So now this is how you're going to see the different color wheels you can come up with with your different primaries. And again, this is a really, really, I would say this is a really warm uh, yellow that we used. This yellow is like almost like orange, pretty much looks like orange to me. So again, you'll see when we have more fun, we'll do another video. We'll use some different primaries. But for right now, we're just going to go with what we have here. And you can kind of see we have olive green here from the blue and orange, or yellow, I should say, yellow. So now we'll do a few more notes just to, uh, so we're going to call this green. This is going to be violet. This is going to be orange.
and then we're going to just notate the, uh, let me see if I can use a different marker here. Yeah, let's use red. So we're going to call this uh, secondary. Green is our secondary color. And violet is our secondary color. All right, I hope we had a lot of fun here. This is exciting. I'm hoping you're going to be looking forward to the next oil painting video. It's going to be soon. It's going to be really soon. Um, maybe within the next few weeks, I'll create another um, maybe color wheel with some different colors. We'll get out. We'll start slow with oils. We're not going to really be coming out and just all of a sudden doing like incredible old masters paintings and copying, you know, <laughs> paintings from Monet and you know, uh, Da Vinci and, and stuff like that. We're just going to have a fun time with it. Take our time, kind of do some fundamentals here with, uh, the oil painting. So we can kind of go back and revisit some fundamentals with like that we would do in oil, uh, watercolor painting. If we were starting an oil painting, uh, watercolor painting. All right. So be back uh, soon with some more oil painting videos. If you like these videos, please thumbs them up. Let me know in the comment section how you like the oil paintings. I've already gotten a few comments. Thank you for those. And again, all the uh, com um, all of my art supplies are down in the description box below. You might have to click um, a few uh, on a couple times on the more information or more words that are underneath my videos to click on more information and you'll see the description box open up and you'll see all the links to all the supplies here that we use for oil painting in case you want to research those uh, art supplies on Amazon of course I buy 90% of all my art supplies on Amazon they have everything it gets delivered quickly great prices so um, I'm definitely a, a huge uh, Amazon um, shopper and uh, let me see, um, I think the main th thing I wanted to have here for my takeaway from this video is number one, two things. Number one is oils are a perfect segue from watercolors to just transition into another medium to have fun, enjoy, learn about, explore while you're still doing your watercolors. So you're not giving up watercolors, you're just trying a new medium, working in that, seeing what you can develop in that and have some fun with it, enjoy it. Gives you a little break from watercolor, especially if you've been doing it for a lot of years. And the second thing is this now with, again, the scientific um, advancements they've made, you can do watercolors now, mixing it with water. You're getting the same beautiful colors, the same absolute same textures of oils without using any kind of dangerous solvents like terpenoids, turpentine, paint thinners, all of that kind of thing. And of course... With these new oils that we have, the water mixable oils, again, I was mentioning, you can get them on your clothes, your pants, your shirts, your blouses, your carpet, your furniture. It'll wash right off with soap and water. So you never have to worry about uh, causing damages to your uh, really nice furniture or your nice clothing that you might be, um, you know, um, wearing or if you might have clothing and it gets on your furniture and then you, you know what I'm saying? It's really, a the new technologies they have with oil painting are incredible. So, um, there's no reason, uh, no reason whatsoever. You would not want to start exploring, exploring oil painting for your, um, your artistic uh, endeavors. Please do it. I'm doing it and I'm hoping you're getting excited about it. And uh, again, let me know in the comment section, thumbs up and let me know, you know, leave some comments of what you think about this. But again, we're having a lot of fun with this. And again, keep, stay tuned. We're going to do lots more, uh, oil painting videos in the near future. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.